everyone, welcome to the Master Life by Design YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you hear today, please make sure you click that subscribe button and tune in for any future videos that we have interviews and the latest and greatest tips tools and tricks that we put out to you so today what i want to talk to you about is goal setting goal setting's huge today we're wrapping up the year of 2017 and i want to share with you what i personally use and what all my clients who are extremely successful the goal setting process that they use to have success throughout their year now if you're one of those people who set goals you, hit, you set these big audacious goals, yet you kind of you find yourself coming up short. Or maybe you're the type of person, you set these goals that you know are achievable, and you always hit them, but you never really make some great strides. So the first thing is you gotta know what type of goal setter you are. Most people that I found find, they like to set goals so big, but yet they never hit it. And they constantly are getting bombarded with defeat. And so they keep getting knocked down over and over and over again. And then I have clients, they set these little goals and they hit them and that's great and it's a win, but it's not really that stride that makes them proud of themselves. It's not something that really makes them feel like they're taking that progress, that next step to go to the next level. So you gotta know where you are and meet yourself in the middle. Now, here's the first thing. If you're setting goals and you didn't hit the goals from the year before, you wanna stick with those same goals. Don't try and move on until you hit the goals that you set last year. You gotta hit those goals and that's when you can move on because a goal setting process should be taking from where you are to that next step, to the next step, and to the next step until you reach where you ultimately wanna go. Now that you've identified what type of goal setter you are, the type of person that you are, you wanna to start to say, okay, what do I really wanna achieve? We wanna to start to look at what does your ultimate day look like? You know, we wanna start from the very end because we can start to work our way backwards. Most people, they start to look at where am I and where do I wanna go, but they have no ultimate destination that they're really working towards. So their path can go this way when really their goal, ultimate goal is this way. So you wanna find out what's your ultimate day. A great exercise I love to take clients through is taking time to sit down and really dial out what is your ultimate day look like? And I'll make a video on this, but what is it? Where do you wanna wake up? What kind of house are you gonna be in? Who are you gonna be waking up next to? What are the activities that you're gonna be doing? Are you doing it with loved ones? Are you doing it with business um, employees and uh, partners? Are you traveling the world on a yacht? Are you tri driving uh, your favorite car? Are you going to experience the things that you always dreamed of that only you see in magazines, but now they're becoming true and they're becoming a reality for you? You gotta know what your ultimate day is. So I would take time to start to look at what kind of life do you ultimately want, and then you start to work backwards. For example, I have my ultimate day on how I like things to be in the future, and as we're working towards that, and I realized I had to break them down into four different phases for my life. I remember I was working a corporate job, I felt like I was in jail, and I said, all right, the first step in this phase of getting to where I ultimately wanna be is I gotta know what I need to do to get out of my job. So I can work for myself, I can work from anywhere in the world, and what's great is we can do that. Christine and I, we have that luxury to go and go where we want, when we want, and we have the ability to help and serve people along the journey. So now we're stepping into 2018, and I wanna help you set goals that you can actually hit. So the first thing is, we gotta know what do you wanna achieve for the year? You wanna set that game plan out, you wanna lay it out, just brainstorm, just throw down things that you wanna achieve. Doesn't matter if you know how they're gonna be hit or not, but I want you to be able to take time and write down those things that you wanna achieve for the year. So take time to do that right now. Okay, now that you've written them down and you know exactly what you want for the year or brainstorm, again, you don't need to know how, we're gonna talk about that, but what you wanna find now is, once you have your annual goals, what we wanna make sure is a couple things. First thing is, they're in a smart format, okay? Smart format, and what that means is, well, if you guys never heard of smart goals, the first one is S, and that stands for specific. Your goals have to be specific. Right? You can't just sit there and say, hey, I wanna make more money. Well, you know, you get outside of your house or you walk down the street and you find a quarter and all of a sudden, you're gonna, your unconscious mind's gonna say, oh, goal achieved. And you're like, no, 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 I wanna make an extra 20 grand this year. Be specific. 
Also, you gotta keep it simple. It's gotta be simple. If it's something that's really complex, it's gonna be hard to achieve and hit and you're just gonna get frustrated with yourself. Next is M and that stands for measurable. We gotta be able to measure it, right? I can't set a goal that says, I wanna be more in love with Christina, my wife, right? I can't set that goal because I don't know how or when I'm going to hit it. We gotta be able to have a way to measure if you hit your goal or not. So I might be able to say, hey, I wanna be present with her, you know, 70% of the time each day. Or I might wanna go out on a certain amount of date nights with her each week just so I have something to measure my goal by. The other thing is, it's gotta be meaningful for you. If it's not meaningful for you, and you're doing it for someone else, like I've had clients do it for their spouse, I had them set goals for their employees, or their boss, or their kids, and they never hit their goals. And they wonder why. It's because it didn't mean anything to them. It's gotta mean something to you. So that's the M. A, is it obtainable? Have you done your research? Is it obtainable based on the time frame that you wanna set, right? If you're looking to build a million dollar business this year and you don't even have a business idea, I don't know how obtainable that is. But we wanna make sure that it's attainable and that it's good in all areas of your life. What I mean is if you're gonna build a business, if you're working 20 hours a day and you're married with kids, then guess what? If that takes time away from them, it's probably not the best goal to set because it's gonna affect other areas of your life plus your health included. The R is realistic. It's gotta be realistic. You can't say, hey, I wanna buy a piece of the moon this year. Like, that's just not a realistic goal. Not this year, at least, anyway. Also, it's gotta be within your control, and I'm gonna talk about that here in a little bit, but it's gotta be within your control. You gotta say, can I hit this goal? Does it matter to me? I have people that are in sales, and they wanna hit you know, 200% of their quota this year. And we gotta find out, what can they control? Because it takes two to tango in sales. But what you can control in sales is how many times you pick up the phone or how many times you knock on doors. That's what you can control. So it's gotta be within your control. And the T is timestamp or by when. When do you wanna achieve your goals by? And I'm gonna to talk to you here in a moment about that. But the T also stands for is towards what you want. You gotta know what you wanna to move towards, not what you wanna move away from. This is huge. People are saying, I don't wanna be in pain this year. Okay, that's great. Well, if you keep focusing on pain, you're gonna get pain. But if you focus on what you want, well, what do you want? I, want? I want happiness, I want health, I want passion. Well, great, if you set a goal for that, then that's what you're gonna be working towards. So you gotta be have a goal that's working towards what you want. So whenever we wanna have success, we're always told to model the best. And I haven't found anyone better to model goal setting than Fortune 500 companies. Now, they don't call them goals, they call them quarterly earning statements, but they're really goals for the shareholders. And so, what they do so great is they break their goals up in the quarter. So first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. That's exactly what I encourage you to do. You may have this annual goal and what you want to achieve, but what I found is the brain can only handle a 90-day psychological sprint. It can only focus for so long before it gets distracted or says it's just too much. And so you want to make sure you can take it into this just a three-month chunk. So between January and the end of March, that's where you wanna start. And then the next quarter, the next, and the next. And so we wanna set goals from our annual goals. We wanna take a bite size of that in the first quarter. What's really gonna make a dent in that? Is it realistic for you to be able to achieve that in that first quarter? So this is where I really believe that if you would break your goals up instead of trying to set annual goals, your success would massively compound. Now. When we set these goals in our quarters, we wanna focus on the top three. Now, I know we might have more than one goal and that's completely fine. I'm not here saying you can't have more than one goal. What I'm saying is pick your top three. I call them the big three. When you focus on your top three, then all of a sudden there's this like, there's this special power that comes upon you that says, this is all I'm focusing on over the next 90 days. Now, if you're focused on you know 10 different things, you're not gonna be able to have your hands in all these different pots and be able to to be as successful as you want to be and so what I encourage you to do is pick your big three our brain thinks in terms of one two three many so when you pick those top three that are most important to you that's gonna make a big dent in your year that's where you get the shift now we understand how we set goals smart goals we also understand how we want to structure our goals right by quarters breaking them up into 90-day chunks but 
what is it that we really are looking for? Now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we create what's called end goals. End goals meaning they come to an end. It's not rocket science, right? And so we wanna create goals that come to an end. Like I wanna release five pounds by the end of the first quarter. I wanna increase my income by $25,000 to hit 50 grand. You know, whatever that might be. So we wanna hit end goals. What I would also encourage you to do is create what we call aim goals. Now, aim goals are a little bit different. They're not as specific. They're more general, they're more vague. But an aim goal is for each of the most important categories of your life, like health, finances, relationships. We want to create an aim goal for each of them. You might be wondering, well, what's the difference between an aim goal and an end goal? Obviously, the end goals come to an end, but the aim goal, what that is, it's about a goal that is continuously playing. It's something that you will never hit. Like for me, for my health and fitness, my aim goal for the rest of my life, I only have one, is to um, massively improve my cardiovascular endurance and to be extremely flexible. Now that's not too specific because we can't measure when I'm, you know, my, my cardiovascular health all the time and I can't measure how flexible I am all the time, although I do need to stretch more. So that's my aim goal. So an aim goal is something you're gonna do the rest of your life because what happens, why that's so important is when you hit that end goal, like say you had a goal, end goal to hit a million dollars and you hit it, you're gonna sit back and I hear this all the time from clients, is that it? Now what? And so we wanna make sure that you have the focus of what you're gonna constantly be working towards. Something that never ends. So we wanna make sure we have an aim goal for each of the major categories of our life. So it's just an extra step when it comes to setting goals, but I'm telling you, if you set that, when you do hit your end goals at the end of the quarter and at the end of the year, you're still gonna have progress. You're still gonna be fulfilled. You're still gonna be having momentum instead of trying to figure out what's next. I did, before I set my aim goals, I did an event called Kokoro with a group of friends and Kokoro is by Mark Devine and Seal Fit out in Encinitas, California. And it's 55 hours of Navy SEAL training, kicking your butt, no sleep. And I remember I was preparing for months on end just for this one event. And I was one of few that actually got an opportunity to finish the event. And once I finished, I was so proud, I was so excited, I passed out because <laughs> I had no sleep. But once I was able to recover, that following week, I sat there and I was like, is that it? Now what? And for months, I didn't set a goal. I didn't have anything I was really working towards other than just to look good for my wife. And so that's great. And I needed something to push me. So now my goal is to do the Spartan race in Iceland where you do it for 24 hours and you see how many times you can complete it in the cold, which is gonna be crazy, but I'm super excited for it. And that's gonna be next year. This upcoming year, I'm gonna doing a 2018 dad bod challenge. So I have my goals where I wanna make sure that I'm at their end goals and I have my aim goal. Does that make sense? So before we wrap up, I wanna give you a quick distinction around what's really gonna help you dial in and get really laser specific so that you can make sure you hit your goals. And the first thing is, there's three types of goals out there. I know I talked about end and aim goals, but there's also outcome goals, performance goals, and process goals. Now what's the difference between the three? Outcome goals are kind of like end goals, it's what you ultimately want to achieve. Performance goals are how you want to show up and what the goals are about how you show up and how you act. And process goals are about what can you do every day to take that step towards that. So let me give you an example, LeBron James, he obviously, his outcome goal is to win an NBA championship. His performance goal may be something like, I want to increase 20, my free throw percentage by 15%, or I wanna increase my three-pointer percentage by 15%, whatever it is. And then his process goal would be something that he can control every day to help him move towards getting better in his performance goal and ultimately hit his outcome goals. LeBron James could sit there before every practice and at the end of every practice, he could do an extra 100 free throws or three pointers to make sure that he's doing the things he can do to increase his performance. If he does that every day, his performance should increase. And if his performance increase, he'll probably win more games, they'll do better in the playoffs and ultimately win an NBA championship. 
So when it comes to your goals, what do you, what's your outcome? What do you want? How can you increase your performance? And what are the process goals that you can set on a daily and weekly basis for you, for you to be able to hit that? That's what you wanna focus on. Now, once you have all of that done, and I know it seems like a lot, but it's simple. It's not that much work. You do the work once and you're totally clear for the rest of the year. Once you have your goals and what you want for the first quarter, now that we have that target, that bullseye that you're shooting towards, we wanna to start to create the fuel, the purpose behind it. A great mentor of mine said, if you know what you want and why you want it, you'll figure out how to do it. Think about it. If you knew you needed to come up with $100,000 to save this, your loved one's life, and you didn't have any money in the bank, but you knew that you loved them, you wanted them to be around, you wanted them to be there to create magical moments in the future, you would find a way. You wouldn't just say, hey mom, or hey hubby, you know what, I love you, I just don't have the money, you know, I'll see you on the other side. Like, no, you would do whatever it takes, you'd figure a way, or you'd make a way. So same thing with your goals, you gotta step up and find out what's gonna drive you, what's gonna make you excited, what's gonna pull you. Because your goals, they gotta be compelling, they gotta be juicy. If they're not, then you're gonna find yourself trying to push yourself. So you gotta find out what drives you. You know, I have clients that are like, well, I wanna make an extra $50,000 so I finish a year at 200 grand for the year. I'm like, awesome, why do you want it? Because we gotta have fuel. Think of about it like in a car. You have this great Lamborghini, but if there's no fuel in the tank, you're not going anywhere, right? So you gotta fill your tank up. And it's not just once, it's every day, every morning. Think about your goals. When you go to sleep at night, and you wake up, it's like you're on E. You gotta fill up every day. So how do we do that? We look at our targets. What do we want? We know our goals. Then we gotta find out what's the fuel, what's gonna make us really be excited about waking up early or going to bed late to get these goals knocked out. And that's your purpose. It's gotta pull you because when you're pulled, think about it, if you've ever been on a boat with a tube tied on the back and you're just sitting on that bad boy, you're getting pulled, it's effortless. You don't have to put any work in, it's just it takes you. But when you have to be, when you have to push something, right? Like a, you have to push, you know, a couch or push something that's really heavy. It takes so much effort, and at times you're probably like, I don't even want to do this. Imagine if you had to push yourself towards your goals every day. You probably wouldn't want to do anything towards them, and that's why you haven't followed through. So you gotta find out what pulls you. Now, how do we do that? We gotta use juicy and compelling language. See, my clients say they wanna make all this extra money to go travel, I'm like, okay, why? They're like, I wanna travel the world, and I'm like, zero to 10, how exciting? How excited are you about that? They're like, oh, five or six. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, pfft. No, it's no good, right? What we wanna do, this is mine. I'm like, I wanna spoil my queen, my friends and my family while traveling all over the world in the most luxurious transportation that man has ever created. So I get to see all of God's beauty and only which 1% of eyes ever get to see. Which one to you is more compelling? See, words have power. You have to choose words that actually light you up inside, that light you on fire. Now I get you might not be good at this, and that's okay, and I'll tell you why you're not good. Because you never practiced it before. I was never good at this, and I started working on it. So you want a secret that I've done? Here's one of my secrets. I would go on Google and i type in a list of adjectives. And I'd get these long lists of adjectives, and I'd take words that I really liked, and I'd write them down on a piece of paper in one location. And then when I'd hang out with mentors, I'd listen to audiobooks or YouTube videos, I'd hear words that capture my attention. I'm like, oh, I like that. Or that paint a nice picture in my mind. And I would write them all on that list. And then I would start using them in my vocabulary. Well, for example, one of my favorite words is magical. When it comes to the holidays, I wanna create magical memories with my family. Instead of saying, hey, I wanna enjoy my holiday. Like, that's boring. I wanna create magical memories for my family that last forever, that outlast me long after I'm gone. That's more compelling. So language has the power to move people, right? Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, and that changed uh, the direction of this country. And so you gotta find a list of adjectives or words that inspire you, motivate you, light you up on fire inside. Once you have that, start using them in your language, but practice writing them down. Practice writing these compelling reasons. And then ask yourself, once you're done, all the reasons why. You gotta ask yourself, zero to 10, how excited am I? Because if it's not a nine or more, 
then you need to redo it. I know you're like, man, Joe, this is a lot of work. How bad do you want your goals? Are you willing to take 30 minutes to an hour to properly set yourself up in 2018 for you to have the best year of your life? Now that you got that, now this is the easy part is we just wanna brainstorm. We just wanna kinda like brain dump everything we can think of for each of those goals on how you can achieve it. Like you don't have to do all of them. You just gotta have a map for you to think about how you're going to get there. For example, if I wanna release 15 pounds this first quarter, I'm gonna have to research a nutrition plan. I'm gonna have to research a workout. I'm gonna have to find out what gym I wanna go to, buy a membership, create my meal plan, go food shopping, right? I gotta do all these things. Maybe ask for an accountability buddy, that's huge, right? So you just wanna create an action plan that's gonna allow you to start the process. And then you gotta prioritize it you want to start to prioritize your massive action plan because once you do that all of a sudden you're like i know exactly what i want i know why i want it and i actually know the first step that i'm going to take towards getting towards this goal so if you want to make sure that you have an extraordinary 2018 i invite you to follow the process i laid out for you know what your target is right the result that you're after we have end goals and aim goals but once you've gotten those two we want to make sure that we're actually setting outcome goals performance goals and process goals after you have that target you got to know why you're going after these goals that's the fuel that you got to connect with each day to light you up so that you can go after those targets and then you have your action plan and that's where you're gonna have that prioritized so you know what to do to get there so I hope this helped I, w I wanted to go into as much detail as I could my wife and I are getting ready to wrap up the new year with some family and we just hope that you guys have an extraordinary 2018 we want to bless you and so you go out there and make this year count for you make this the most extraordinary year but you gotta know why you want what you want I believe in you. If you're watching this video, there's a reason. You want more out of life. You want to make sure that you set goals and you hit them. So you got to make sure that you're overcoming any of the challenges and this is some of the process that helps you eliminate some of those roadblocks. So if you want to make 2018 an extraordinary year, make sure you follow everything we shared with you today. It's what I do to have the success that I have in my life. It's what I help my clients do this exact process so that they have the success that they have in their life. If you're one of those people that you know you need accountability, you're like, Joe, I know what I want, I can do all this, but I, I need to be held accountable. I heard that the people who are held accountable the most, they're the ones that get the most success. And that's true. People who have an accountability partner and they have an appointment with someone have a 95% chance of succeeding in their goal. So if you need some help, reach out. We want to help support you. You can work with myself or my wife. You can work with one of our coaches here at Master Life by Design so that you make sure that you get the results that you want this year. You're watching this video for a reason. You want more out of life. And you're sitting there probably wondering, how am I going to do this? I don't know what I need to do. But we can be there every step of the way. You have greatness within you. You're worth it. You're more than enough. So thank you for tuning into this video. If you liked it, please click the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, comment below. And if you know somebody that needs to hear this, share it with them on social media so that they can go out there and make 2018 an extraordinary year too. With that, Joe Moffitt, Master Life by Design. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.